really excited to chat with Jen today about body composition changes because both of us get a lot of inquiries from women who want to change their body composition and that is generally increase muscle mass and decrease body fat. Now Jen and I have both dabbled in figure, we both trained for powerlifting, we've done a lot of different things in the industry and both of us have kind of shifted our focus more from being solely on aesthetics to health as well, which is great. But let's be honest, some people want fat loss. So what's the number one piece of advice that you have for someone who's looking to lose body fat? Ultimately, it boils down to nutrition. Uh, that doesn't that doesn't mean it's got to be crazy and strict and restrictive, but it, it is going to be what you eat. Um, a lot of women train like crazy. We've got that part down pat, but we need to dial the nutrition in and find out what's best for you and and eat that. <laughs> well, and I think it's really important too, first, before you ever get started with anything, to have a realistic view of what a healthy, and sustainable body fat level is, right? Because I have some women that come in, they have veins in their abs, and they're like, I really want to lose body fat. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what body fat, right? right? Because they don't have any to lose. Or, you know, they're already, they've already lost their period because they're so lean, but they just feel like they're not lean enough. And I know for me, having been um, heavy in the past and having been extremely lean doing figure competitions, it took a while for me to kind of find that healthy balance where I felt good and felt comfortable in my own skin. So I think for me, it would be how lean do you want to get right um, and I guess you probably have that talk with your clients don't you yeah and and also how lean will your specific body let you get it's different for everybody some people some women can get down to you know 17 18 percent like it's nothing whereas other people are gonna struggle to hit 20 so what's the biggest mistake that your clients make when it comes to fat loss like when they come to you before they start working with you what's the big red flag that you're like oh that's the issue um, over restricting. I, it is the number one biggest problem that I see. I've got women that come to me and they want me to make changes for them and oh I'd love to work with you except the problem is we have nowhere to go. Um, that is, that's what I always tell women, leave yourself somewhere to go and when, when a woman comes to me and they're only eating 900 to 1000 calories a day and they're doing cardio for 60 minutes a day, I can't do anything except reverse diet you. What's your process for reverse dieting your clients back to a healthier place? Reverse dieting is a really tricky process. Um, it is more <laughs> mental, I was just going to say, it. it's more mentally involved than it is actually physically. It depends how long the person has been dieting like crazy and overtraining. Basically the longer they go dieting really hard and overtraining, the harder it's going to be to reverse diet mm -hmm. them. Basically, reverse dieting is slowly increasing calories and increasing carbohydrates. Um, it typically, like you said, it's typically two to three steps backwards initially in order to move forward. Um, but you, you have to build up your metabolism, your metabolic capacity, and you have, to, you, have to, you have to increase your calories enough to where you have somewhere else to go. Right, right, no, I totally agree. And I see the same thing with my clients. And it's so sad because women are so scared to do that. And I've been scared to do that in the past before too. But again, if you're eating so little and you're not feeling good and you're not losing body fat, like, you're gonna have to increase your calories a little bit. So this is such a big one. How long can a person expect to wait before they start seeing changes in their body composition? <laughs> million dollar question. That is the million dollar question. And obnoxiously, the answer is it just depends. depends. It depends. Um, any coach or anybody, any person that tells you it, that they, they guarantee you X amount of pounds or X amount of body fat in this amount of days, they're lying to you. That's or they don't care what you're losing. They right. don't care if you're losing bone mass and muscle mass. And right. Everything. Yeah, because we can chop your arm off yeah, and you exactly. can lose X <laughs> amount of pounds. Um, but it, it ultimately depends. It depends, first of all, uh, as long as you've got healthy hormones. Healthy hormones build yeah. the found. They are the absolutely the foundation for fat loss. Assuming you have healthy hormones, how your diet is, how your consistency is, your training, and additionally your sleep and stress, which are the two big, big components that a lot of people don't take into consideration. Yeah, so. those lifestyle factors that people forget about, they don't realize how critical they are to their long-term success. And the other thing is, where are you right now? So if you're 75, 100 pounds overweight, 50 pounds overweight, like that first little bit's probably gonna drop off pretty quickly, right. especially if you haven't done a lot of restrictive dieting in the past. If you're trying to lose that, la like that last five pounds to get pretty lean, like that that can take, yeah, that can take quite a while. And again, it might take a little bit of bumping your calories up for a little bit, maybe gaining a pound or two and then being able to come back down and losing three or four and then going back up and then going back down. And for some people, your body might not just want to go there. Right. So how do you um, kind of help women figure out like where is their happy place? There's a certain level of discomfort that 
has to kind of be tolerated in order to continue getting leaner. Uh, and I'm not talking, of course, the crazy hairball restrictive diets because I, I won't recommend that to anybody. You know, but I've had clients that I've worked with and they want to continue getting leaner, but they're already complaining of hunger. You know, I'm kind of hungry and I'm noticing like my strength's going well, down dieting. just a touch. <laughs> While you're dieting, you know, but they want to get leaner. They say, you know, let, what can we change? It's, and so I tell them, well, we can get a little bit more aggressive. However, that is also going to mean giving up your weekly wine. It's going to mean giving up, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit more of your comfort. Yeah. You're going to have to get uncomfortable. And if, if they say, you know what, that's a deal breaker to me, then that's when we say, okay, well, this is your body's yeah, this is, this is your body's happy place. That's that intersection of, of health and performance and lifestyle and aesthetics. Mm -hmm. And there might be times in your life where it's worth it to you to right. get a little bit leaner. Maybe you're going on a vacation or you know you want to like feel extra you know great in your wedding dress or whatever. There are times to focus on aesthetics a little bit. And then there's times to back off and focus on lifestyle. When I went to Italy with my family for two weeks, I was not focused on aesthetics. <laughs> I was focused on lifestyle. I was going to eat my gelato and I was going to eat my cheese and I was you know going to indulge in the things I wanted to indulge in because I was in Italy. So at that point in time, lifestyle took priorities. So can you talk a little bit about the moderation? Because I know you and I have both, again, come from the really restrictive <laughs> place to a place of a little bit more moderation and kind of how that helped you get to where you feel good with your body. So moderation was something that was pretty tricky for me. It took a lot of... Uh overcoming some mental hurdles. I was convinced that if I wasn't eating clean all the time um, that I was just going to pile the weight on. Uh, so for me, I started following an if it fits your macros approach about a year ago. Uh, followed it for a couple months and just to give a disclaimer, I feel like if it fits your macros is an appropriate approach for some people, not for all. Uh, however, I decided to tinker with it a little bit and it was actually a really good thing for me. I gravitate towards natural foods anyways, whole and processed foods, but I managed to use the if it fits your macros approach to kind of work in a couple of treats here and there. So if I wanted a cookie, I would just work it into my macros. Or if I wanted a pancake, I would work it in. So that was actually really good for me and really freeing because it would show me that if I had pancakes for breakfast, I was actually not going to balloon up the next yeah. day. Yeah, well, and it's so nice because you're not like, oh, well, I've had pancakes, so now I'm gonna have all the pancakes, right? <laughs> and all the sausage and all the bacon. Like, right. I had to convince myself, like, I can have a salad and have a cupcake. Like, those two things aren't mutually exclusive. They can right. be in the same meal. And so for me, I've been able to maintain not just my sanity, which is extremely important, <laughs> but, but a much just leaner and healthier body overall with a more moderate approach. Right. So. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Body composition change is a hot topic and something that a lot of people want to know about. So hopefully you kind of understand what it means to, to change your body composition, what that looks like, how long it might take, and how moderation might be something that, that fits your life. Hope you guys enjoyed it.